Baron Corbin versus Gable Stevenson. Now, when this did is Baron lower. become a seaman? The, what? Oh, when pirate. did Baron become a seaman? There was a pirate yes. in this video. Well, I was getting to this. Uh, th yes. This is low on the list of problems with this match, but I do want to mention Baron Corbin spent like a month burning all his old gimmicks and going to find himself in the woods and coming face to face with himself, like Luke Skywalker right. on Dagobah. And he comes back and he's just the same guy, except there's a pirate boat in his video. Well, right. I think that he, yeah. he came back as himself. He doesn't have a gimmick now. I see. Except as opposed to before when he was a constable. Except he's a pirate and enthusiast. He was happy. Like, and that's not him. He's yeah. not happy. Clearly not. No, he's just a right. crabby guy that likes a lot of meat. Uh, All right. Now, as noted, <laughs> as noted, this is uh, low on the list of problems with this segment. So, Gable Stevens got a lot of hype, got a lot of notoriety, got a gold medal, <laughs> exactly one gold medal. And uh, we immediately, and I, I, I thought this at the time, and now it's abundantly clear, the record for the worst wrestler with the best entrance video is Gable Stevenson, because this entrance video is awesome. But he comes out, and he's a large, muscular biped, and he just stands there. And <laughs> the action starts, and this guy, this guy can throw a hell of a suplex. Sure. And that's it. End of positives. Yeah. So. Well, I thought I thought that he threw he threw listen, let let's judge this the way it should be judged. This was the guy's first ever match. And he was debuting on a live pay per view in front of five thousand people or however many people are in this building. And, you know, for a guy in his first ever match, he was athletic. He did a a, a decent leapfrog. You know, he there, there there was a point early where he forgot what he was supposed to do, but they got back on on the same page again. And they kept it rather simple. Uh, the his punches were all right. Meh. His selling eh, all right. I'll give it all right, but that's about it. His selling is mm. his, his selling. I've seen worse. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, I thought for a debut, it was it was all right. Was it the best debut I've ever seen, especially in NXT? N nowhere close. No. He's no Braun Breaker. He's, he's no, no Tony D'Angelo. He's no Kalani uh, Jordan. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but it, here the thing is, like, I can name right. We we went. You owe this guy uh, money. What what are you doing? Uh, what am I doing? Do I owe money? I'm telling you this. I'm trying to tell you guys yeah. facts here because I had to deal with a bunch of people on Twitter who were not dealing with facts. They're like, because uh, here's the thing, he got booed. Oh, fans booed the guy. <laughs> yeah, out of the and, building. Uh, and you know these fans are like, well, you know, his legal history. Well, of course he got booed. And I was like, listen, I ain't defending the guy, okay? But this guy has appeared on NXT, Raw, SmackDown, WrestleMania, and SummerSlam, okay? He has never gotten booed before. Not in one single building in front of any crowd has he ever gotten booed, okay? But there was something about this match where this match got going, and they watched this guy work, and they just decided... Fuck this guy. And they booed him and they cheered Baron Corbin. They're and right. they're cheering Baron Corbin during his heat. Yeah. And then, you know, uh Gable will start making a comeback. They boo him. And then he gets cut off and they cheer Corbin. And then finally he makes his big comeback and they're booing this dude out of the building. And then they did the goddamn shittiest fucking finish you could have possibly done. Which is, we're brawling, and you know, this is the funny thing, too. They start brawling outside the ring, and, uh, you know, people brawl outside the ring all the time. But they start brawling outside the ring, and all of a sudden, this referee's like, three, four, and he's yelling at the top of his lungs. And I'm like, they're doing a fucking count out. Are you kidding me? And, uh, and sure as shit, it was a double count out. And the fans are booing they're chanting bullshit they send out these geeks to try to break them up and they're they're booing like crazy and i thought you could not have had a bigger fail as a debut than this debut right here of baron corbin and gable Stevenson. a catastrophe is what this was a catastrophe god so first the crowd begins to chant you're not angle 
You're not angle, which uh, e- even I will. You know what it not. was? You know what it was, Vinny? I'll bet you anything, because he did not get booed for his entrance, right? No, because the video was so cool. But yes, go ahead. Yeah, very early on, he there was a spot where he obviously forgot what he was supposed to do, mm-hmm. and then he immediately went for an ankle lock. I see. And I think when he went for the ankle lock, that's when people decided, God damn it, another fucker trying to be Kurt Angle. Yeah. You ain't Kurt Angle, and that's when they turned on him, and the rest is history. Well, they got Yorta Angle. And it was a shitty ankle lock, too. <laughs> they start they start chanting, which I, don't, I honestly don't think I've ever heard before, Baron Corbin. Yes. And even Booker's like, wait a minute. <laughs> So they're having this match. It's no good. Corbin looked f- flustered. I'll say flustered. He was not expecting to get this kind of cheers. He didn't like it. He wasn't supposed to get cheers. And then they do this horrible finish. And all I think was, imagine booking this and thinking fans want to see this match again. This didn't work. This was absolute trash, save uh, Corbin's new entrance music. Um, this was no good. Mackenzie interviews Lyra Valkyria backstage. How are you feeling after that match with uh, Rhea Ripley? Hey, that's my my own voice. She's thirsty for more. She says she can go toe-to-toe with the best there is. She's very curious about this upcoming women's championship match. And then she's attacked by J.C. Jane. They're having this fight. And while this is going on, Rhea Ripley casually strolls by, looks at them, doesn't break stride, just cackles uproariously. Because she's great. She's just great. Let's see. Wesley versus Mustafa Ali versus Dominic Mysterio. This was a fine match with three or four high spots, but the whole time I'm thinking if you took any one of these guys out and just made it a singles match, it would be way better. Because as it is, you got the uh, you, you have the uh, good guy in Wesley, the very bad guy in Dominic Mysterio, and the kind of tweener in Ali, Mustafa Ali, who fans aren't sure what to do with him right now. And uh, it would just felt like three three guys taking random turns doing stuff, and none of it really meant anything. And then after the guys' turn was over, the next guy would go, and they're just more random stuff. Now, as I noted, there were some highlights. Uh, Ali missed a 450 to the apron, which is terribly violent, although I must say nobody cared. Uh, the biggest one was Wesley tried to dive, but Rhea Ripley blocked his path, and so he ran again and dived over her onto Dominic. But this merely enraged Rhea Ripley, a terrible thing to do. She grabbed Wesley, pump handle slammed him through the announce desk. I thought he was dead, taking the world's most violent finishing move through, a de- to, through the announce desk. But uh, he kicked out in the ring. And uh, eventually Wes is down. Uh, and Dom is like, in the, 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 he's hung in the tree of woe, but to the outside of the ring. So Ali does a 450 on Wes. He has the match won, but Rhea grabs Ali, yanks him out of the ring, and the dominant recovers, does a frog splash, gets the pin, still champion. And like I said, Did say, you call him the Dominic? I probably did. Uh, the the Dominic, dominant, I thought he said. The Dominic hit the frog splash. And uh, there were a few highlights, mostly three guys randomly doing stuff. I actually thought this was a really good match. I thought the story was easy, which was both guys hated Dominic. And so they wanted to each beat him up so badly that they got in a fight with each other over who got a chance to beat up Dominic. And, of course, this gave him the opportunity to do all sorts of stuff. And I thought the last probably three, four minutes where everybody's hitting these big moves and everybody's kicking out and is trying to use the belt and then the other belt gets used and there's a kick out of that one and Wes is just kicking out of this and that and this and fans are chanting, this is awesome. And then finally... Uh, Ali tries at 450. Rhea pulls him out of the ring, and then Dom went up top. And I don't know if it was because, like, Wesley was closer than he's used to or whatever. But, man, this dude jumped 15 feet straight up in the air and came down and crushed this dude and got the pin. And uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was a very good match. And uh, thank God Dominic retained the title because his last two weeks on, on NXT television, I mean, Judgment Day is moving numbers. And uh, we need to get people watching that show because it's a renewal year. And uh, he's the right guy's champ for the time being. Yeah, I thought this was a very good match as well. I like uh, the innovative uh, three-way spots that they did were were very cool. Um, The 452, the apron, the execution of the move looked very cool. The setup was absolutely ridiculous. You had two guys on their backs laying on the bottom rope 
uh, just strung out to dry right there. It just, it looked absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it looked uh, very contrived and set up and wouldn't you know it, it was. Um, and I am completely amazed at how much heat Dominic gets. It's unbelievable because I, I don't watch the product from week to week. And when he's on the, the screen, I just, I am shocked how much they hate this kid. On a scale of one to 10, this was about, I would say, a six compared to some of the tens that he gets on, on yes, Raw. Yes, but he was the star on this show. No, I know. But my point is, like, this was heat. But, I mean, the heat this guy can get on Raw sometimes is is sure. absolutely unbelievable. My favorite spot in this match, actually, one of them, was uh, Wesley wants to hit Dominic with a dive. And so Rhea jumps up on the apron, and she says, you ain't doing a dive on Dirty Dom here. And so she's on the apron, and she's got her back turned. And so Wesley runs, and he jumps over Rhea Ripley to mm -hmm. wipe out Dominic on the outside. Like so, of course, said, yeah. now Rhea's pissed. And so she goes over, and she's going to put old Wesley through the table. Well, her finish is Vinny's finish. It's the, uh, it's the pump handle slam, basically. The dreaded pump handle slam. Before. Yes. And uh, the thing with the pump handle slam is that uh, you can only lift the person up kind of so high. You know what I mean? It's not like a razor's edge where you have them like your arms are extended straight over your head or you're going to like lift them up for a power bomb and they're way high in the air. They're only going up so high. And uh, Wes Lee is, I don't know, 155 pounds or whatever. Well, this fucker's got to go through this table. So go back and watch Rhea Ripley do this riptide. She lifts this guy as high as she can, which is not very high. And you have never seen a human being drive another person down so violently with a pump handle slam. She fucking drove this guy, and he, and he broke the table. But, man, she had to power this guy through the table because of what her finish is. It was awesome. So Ricky Starks comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had, his expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no what idea getting? what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.